Hello, Facebook Live, Steve Woody here for another Midday Mastery, episode number 28. And today I'm testing some new things out. One, I've got the lapel mic on. Hopefully you can hear me a lot better. I'm not too keen on the lighting at the moment. I'm going to improve that for tomorrow. But for now, it kind of works. And publish is better than perfect. So can you just let me know you can hear me okay? And let me know if you can see me okay? The reason I'm doing this now is because I've got the big whiteboard. And I wanted to say thank you to Snap Voices. David. Ali, the rest of the team over there at Snap Voices, thank you very much, because thanks to them and their amazing generosity, they have donated the whiteboard for us so that we can use it for our Facebook Live. So very, very grateful, thank you for that. Can you hear me okay? Just like, give me a little comment, let me know if you can hear me, or give me a thumbs up, because it's new audio, I just want to check before I start rambling on. Um, I'm gonna talk about something quite important today, it's gonna help a lot of you. You can see and hear me, great, that's good, that's all I need. So welcome, hello guys. I'm gonna try and spend about 30 minutes on this, you can always play it back later if you need it, but just so that you're aware, it's probably best to grab yourself a brew. Get a good cup, good brew, and um, let's go. So what we're talking about today, how to get more sales. And I'm gonna focus on one specific thing. The thing that I'm gonna focus on today is going to be, apart from e-commerce, it's gonna be the shopping cart. And it's gonna be the process, the checkout process. I'm gonna to focus today on the checkout process and how you can get more sales into your business because a lot of people don't realize this, but you can lose a lot of sales purely through the checkout process. Through cart abandonment, through not having it set up properly, through a bad customer journey. So we need to first and foremost understand who we're talking to. So there are two types of shopping carts that you might want to use. Okay, there is a e-commerce site which has lots and lots of products on it, and that will be your focal point. If that is your focal point, that's absolutely fine, but that's not what I'm focusing on today. So I just want you to know that if you have an e-commerce site and you're looking at uh, selling lots and lots of products like what Argos does, like what Amazon does, what eBay kind of does in that sort of style, that's not our focus today. My focus is specifically for small business owners and for entrepreneurs who've got products and services that they're selling and how we're gonna set up and what we're gonna do. So, we've talked about sales funnels before, we've been through the whole process before of, of what we need to do, of getting people to go through an opt-in, to go through a sales landing page, to go to a sales page, and we get them to the checkout page. This is where we're gonna to start today. Get them to the checkout page, and then we get them to the thank you page, okay? So this is going to be the checkout, and this is gonna be the thank you. So I'm gonna talk about some systems, some things you need to do, some things you need to have in place, and all of that to try and improve on this. And what I'd really like you to do today is to go away, look at your own business, and what you're applying, what you're not, what you need to do, what, what you know, things that you can change. And so, where we're gonna start off at the moment is with the checkout. Now, any page that has the opportunity for somebody to purchase something should have one outcome. One outcome, if they're on that page, if they are on the checkout page, if they're on the sales page, the whole purpose of the sales page, right? So we've talked about the sales page before. The whole purpose of like the opt-in is to get their details, right? And then we'll put them through a nurture sequence and then they'll go into a sales page. The whole purpose of the sales page is to get them to agree to purchase. And the whole purpose of the checkout page is to get them to put in their card details is to get them to make that purchase. So, what makes a good checkout page? Really, really simple, three things, all right? Let's imagine that they're on a sales page and we've got a button and that button says, click here to continue, check out, purchase, whatever it needs to be. Whatever it is, there's a call to action on the sales page, which when they click it, it should redirect them directly to the checkout page if that's what you're doing. Because if you send them to a cart page, then they've got to go through another process, then another process, another process. You don't want to send them on all of these different touch points because these are other opportunities where they could leave. So one thing that I would try and avoid is if you take them to a sales page and then take them to an upsell page, they might be like, oh, I only wanted that original thing and now you're trying to sell me this. Like, don't do that. Send them straight to the checkout page. If you're going to do an upsell, up, embed the upsell in the checkout page. Very, very easy to do that and that's what I'd focus on. So the idea here is we're not gonna take them on this crazy journey, we're not Uber, we're just gonna take them on a simple sales to checkout. Now when they land on the checkout, 
First thing you need to do is most people have a logo and a top menu because it's on their website, right? Their checkout is embedded on their website, so they'll put their navigation links so that people can leave the page. Why would you want people to leave the page when they're about to give you their money? Don't have your logo on there. You can, I suppose, if you want your logo, but don't have a menu. No menu. There's no need for a menu. There's no need for any reason to send people away from this page. The only way that people should be able to leave this page is if they click on their back browser button or if they click on the close browser browser button. That's it. And even if they're going to, if they leave the page, you want to give them a pop-up. Are you sure? Ask them. Hey, what are you doing? You're almost, you're almost there. Don't leave. Just give them the point when they're on this page that they can't leave. Does that make sense? Does that make sense so far? Good. So, what we're going to do, first thing we're going to do, and we need to try and do this effectively on this page. We don't want a huge, long checkout page with loads of dribble that they don't care about. No point. We've got this thing called a fold. A fold is an imaginary line, and we've talked about this before, and it's in the books, you can read it in the book. It's an imaginary line, which is an average of what most people see the moment the page loads. So we want to try and get everything onto that top screen. So when the page loads, it's all here. This is what we want, ideally. Order confirmation. This is what you're purchasing. Details. Put in your details here. Maybe if you're going to have an upsell, you can have that there as well. Testimonials. This is why this product is so amazing. Maybe even an order summary. So what you can do, whoop. is you have what they're ordering, yep, or this could just be check out, da, 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 check out page, just so they know what page they're on, or what they're doing, like step one, two, three, however you're going to do it, you know. So they've already purchased, they're now on step two, which is pay, and step three is get their product. So you have a summary, right, you have a nice simple summary of what they're getting. This is what you're getting, you're getting this, and this, and this, and this, and this, stack the value, perceived value. This is the point, any objection handling, when you say to them, this is what you're about to pay for. When you pay, you're going to get this. It's a brief, very simple summary. One word, just da, 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 very easy. It's basically everything in your sales page just transferred into a little tiny snapshot so they can read back and go, oh yeah, I remember. This is what I'm getting. A couple of people, not from Fiverr, don't go and get your testimonials from Fiverr. It just makes you look like a douchebag. Actually get real testimonials. Get testimonials from people that have actually bought. And if you have to give this away for free, to the first two people to get testimonials from them, then do that. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm loving my Hello Kitty mug, by the way. So, when you're on this page, summary, testimonials, contact, uh, details, name, address. Now, if they're just booking in for a consultation, if they're booking in for a free discovery call, you don't need to know their first dog's name. Like, all you need to know is their name and their email address. Like, you can choose on a checkout form what details you ask for. You don't want any, like, the more, if, you're, if you're just giving away a free product where they don't have to pay for it, but you're asking for their billing address and all of this other stuff, chances are most people are like, oh, I don't want to put that information in, it's too much hassle. They'll leave. So just get the information that you need. Once they've purchased, you can always go back and get more information later. If you need to physically send them something, then ask for their address. If you're not physically sending them anything, you don't need their address anymore. You don't need their address for card veri uh, verification. You don't need their address for PayPal, Stripe, or anything like that. Just get the information that you need. All right, you can ask them some basic information, and if they're purchasing something, like if it was this price, but you're doing it for free, then great. Ask for it. Fill in information if you need it. Say that if you want it for card verification, whatever you need, because you do want to capture as much information as possible. But just be aware that the more information you ask for, the longer this process, the more complex and drawn out this process, the less chance someone's going to fill it in. So you want to try and capture people. Now, here's something else that you need to do. This is very, very important. On this page, you need what is called a pixel. This is called a checkout pixel. You have a pixel on this page. You'll have a Facebook pixel. You'll have any targeting that you're going to do, any, any of that. You'll also be tracking this on your website because what you want to know is if somebody comes from the sales page to the checkout, but they don't make it to the thank you, 
then this process is broken. And what you need to be able to do is go back to them with a series of emails and say, hey, what went wrong? I see you started to check out but didn't finish. I see you got to this place where you, were, you wanted to do this but you didn't quite finish it. So you need to make sure that if they're going through this process that you've got enough information on them that you can follow up and find out why they may have abandoned. There's a big thing called abandoned cart and that is where people are at the point where they're going to check out but they don't quite finish. So we want to make sure we do that. The next thing that you need to know, this is very, very important. I'll talk to you about this. I'll go through the questions in a minute, guys. The next thing you need to know is that once they've, and obviously a very, very clear, that's not very clear, is it? Because it's the same color. A very, very clear, pay now. Give me your money. Very, very clear, very, very obvious button. You need to make it really, really obvious so that they can pay you and so they can give you their money. Now, once they've done that, I recommend personally using Stripe and PayPal. They're two very, very good systems. Yes, you're going to pay a percentage on them, but you get the money in PayPal if you're in the UK, you get it instantly. Stripe, it's a few days. Also, another option is Go Cardless. Go Cardless charge about 1% for direct debits in the UK. Uh, if you're using Stripe, it's 2.4%, I think, plus 20p. PayPal is 3.4% plus 20p. You don't need PayPal buttons anymore. You don't need those links. And look, if you just want to get money in and you want to get money quickly, then go to paypal.me forward slash, you can set your own username. For me, it would be online mastery forward slash and then any amount. If you went to paypal.me forward slash online mastery forward slash 10, it would allow you to give me 10 pounds. I would highly recommend that if you are going to do that, that you put a couple of zeros on the end of it after the one. Just saying, if you're going to give me money, make sure you give me as much as you can. But I'm joking, I don't really want any money out of this. That's the point though, that if you need to get money quickly from people, you can give them a PayPal link and it's done. The whole thing is about how you can, like, I'll never forget this. A good friend of mine, Simone, runs a company called GTEx. We, uh, we went out for a drink a um, long time ago now, and he was telling me about this new product that he was launching. And I said, oh, what are your payment options? He said, oh, it's really good, you're going to love this. He said, it's either easy, they can easily pay me, a thousand pounds, or they can really easily pay me two thousand pounds, or it's super simple and easy to pay me five thousand pounds. Like he just made it like in a, into a joke, but it, there's some truth in what he said there. When people are going to give you money, you don't want to overcomplicate this. This needs to be as simple as it possibly can, completely free from distractions, focusing on just getting what you need. Any last minute objections, just so they remember what they're getting, there's a couple of testimonials, put in their details. They shouldn't think about this. This is not a thought process here. This is, this is where the thought process takes place, on the sales page. Once they've clicked through to the checkout, they've committed that, okay, I wanna buy. All we need to do now is get their details. Once we've got their details, the next thing we need to do, very, very important, is we redirect them instantly to a thank you page. They need to go to a thank you page specific to what they've just bought. Ideally with a video of you saying, hi, thanks for purchasing. This is what you need to do next. Or your order's on the way. Or click this link. Or whatever it's going to be. Now it's a little bit complicated with WooCommerce. It's not that easy. It's not geared up for this. WooCommerce is more geared up for this. But it does work. And there's a lot of things you can do and use that can help you through this process. Also, you want to make sure that you've got your order details. See, what I do, I'm going to talk you through my systems now and what I use. When someone places an order, I have a plugin on my website called Zero. It's my bookkeeping software. It takes the order, it creates an invoice, and it sends it straight to the bookkeeping software, so I don't have to do anything. That's reconciled automatically. Don't have to touch it. That's a really good thing to have. Another thing that you should have, if you've got any form of checkout on your site, any form of checkout, let's start here. You should have an SSL certificate. SSL certificate stands for, I'm, I'm not even, I'm terrible, I can't remember, but it's Secure Socket Layer, I believe. I, I, I normally get that wrong, but it's SSL certificate. It's your encryption. It's your little green padlock that you get on your website. And it's the bar, address bar. It just makes it, it means it's encrypted. Tracy, hello, good to see you. Um, the SSL certificate is very important for your checkout. It means it's secure, it's encrypted. In fact, there is no reason why you shouldn't have an SSL certificate on your entire website now. Google prefers it. You get ranked higher in your SEO for it. Customers prefer it. It just makes you look a lot better and a lot, um, and, you know, a lot more professional. And it's just a good thing to have. Plus, if you go to Let's Encrypt, Let's Encrypt, it's free. You can get a free SSL. I don't know if your host will let you have third party. Make sure whoever you're hosting with, they let you have third party SSLs. 
that's really important, but you need to make sure you've got your SSL certificate. Next thing you need to know, if you've got your SSL certificate, obviously you've got your e-commerce, so you need to know whatever e-commerce you're going to use. Again, there's uh, Shopify, Big Commerce, there's Magento, there's loads of them. I only really use WooCommerce. It's the one I use, it's the one I like. Wow, there's loads of you on, by the way, hello. I only, I only really use e-commerce, um, uh, WooCommerce, um, and I like it because I own it, it's mine. I can customize it, I can tweak it, I can do all of these things. I use the Xtheme and I use WooCommerce in WordPress, and it allows me to do absolutely everything that I need to do. Um, the next thing that you might want to consider, well, actually, let's go through the most important things. Um, if you're going to be putting tracking pixels on your website, specifically if you're in Europe, then you're going to need cookies policy. You must let people know that you're going to be tracking their data. You must have a cookie policy. It's very important. It's actually the law to have that. Another thing you need to have is terms and conditions. Privacy policy, terms and conditions, terms of use, refund policies, all of those sort of legal documents. There's a plugin called Legal Pages in WordPress. Go and get Legal Pages, download some templates. Then just use it as a starting point. Do you know what I mean? Any, anything's better than nothing. Like you need to have that. And if you're going to do any advertising and marketing, you have to have those. You're in breach of your terms of your advertising if you haven't got terms and conditions on your website. Very, very important. If you're going to be selling anything, you have to have that. Also, make sure you're paying tax. If you're selling anything, no matter what it is, you may just be selling your time and thinking, do you know what? I don't need to worry about this. You will one day regret the fact that if you're doing business and you're not set up properly to do this, because this is business, you're making money. And like the government doesn't give a shit who you are. If you're making money and not giving them any of it, you're a bad person in their books. Just keep them, keep them sweet, keep them happy. Just make sure that you're offsetting anything you need to do for tax, for VAT, whatever you're doing. Just make sure all of that's done. Like, there's no reason not to be able to do that. You need to, if, if, you, if you're in business, like this, you've either got a job or you've got a business. If you've got a business, like the finances, that's just a part of the business. Too many people now are like, oh, I want to sell something online and just don't consider that whole side of it, the whole admin just like, oh, I'm just going to leave that over there and focus on doing what I do best because I enjoy this because this is nice and easy. I can tell you now, if it wasn't for my accountant, I'd probably be in jail by now. The first two years of my business were horrendous. I didn't even file any paperwork. I had all the late fees and everything like because I don't like doing the admin side of the business. That's not what I do. I'm not the admin type of person. So I needed to make sure I hired the right people to do that for me. But you still need to be aware of it. It's very important, especially if you've got anything e-commerce, don't just, oh, I'm going to set up an e-commerce store because it's easy and simple. Don't fall into that trap because if you're serious about like, if you're just doing this to make a couple of quid, that's great, I understand that, but I'm really not the kind of guy for you. If you want to make a scalable business, like in the early days when you're starting out and no one knows about you, things like that don't matter because no one knows you exist. But as you start to scale and as you become a, a, a decent size and you start to get established and people start to notice you, shit like this matters. You'll get in trouble. Same with images. Don't go to Google to get your images. Make sure you purchase them and purchase the right license for any images and audio you use. Because if all of a sudden people start finding out about you and you start getting successful, which is what you want, right? More sales. You start to get more successful, people start seeing you. You can, you can end up getting sued if you're not careful. You can end up getting a lot of fines. And I've seen it happen, so just be careful. That's all I'm saying, just be careful. So, e-commerce, cookies, terms and conditions. Something else we need to consider on this. We've already talked about the tracking pixels we need on a website. Another thing that we need to consider on the website is going to be, so if you're using WooCommerce, I'm, I'm, I'm going to focus on WooCommerce at the moment because that's what I use, it's what I recommend, it's what I teach, it's everything I go through. There's so many other people that can tell you about other things, but let's just dive a little bit deeper into WooCommerce. One of the things I highly recommend is a plugin called Checkout Field Editor Pro. Uh, you can get a free version, but Checkout Field Editor Pro, and I'll paste the links in the bottom. What that allows you to do is if you've got your fields here, and this is like name, email, what it allows you to do is you can turn off, conditionally, you can turn off certain fields on certain products. So if they're only booking a discovery call, you can turn off the whole address thing that you don't need it. You can turn off all the things that you don't need, so you're only getting the information you need. The other thing you can do is you can remove the labels and you can use what's called placeholders. What that does is that condenses the whole form because now you're not using labels. All of your labels are, apply, are appearing within the field itself. It condenses the form, makes it smaller. Specifically in WooCommerce, and I've got a free template. In fact, I'll post the link because I've got, if you're using Xtheme and you've got WooCommerce, I have this whole template set out for you. You can go and there's a video that tells you exactly how you can use it. You can go and get that. 
In fact, if you do go and get that, you're going to end up in my opt-in, just so that you know, and you'll end up going through this process. But if I'm not doing what I'm teaching you, then what's the point of me doing it, right? So the whole idea here is that you can press this just into the information that you need, all right? It makes it smaller for you. Next thing you need to know is you've got your payment gateways. It's very obvious. We've already talked about that. Different. So your shopping cart, all right, your e-commerce is one thing. Your merchant gateway is another. So what are you going to use to take the payment? A lot of people just at the moment have their bank. You know, all <laughs> payment gateway. A lot of people are like, just pay me into my bank, but you can't automate that. You have to physically go into the bank and check, or go online and check, to make sure that the payment's gone through. And that's a nightmare, you don't want to be doing that. So if you're using PayPal or Stripe, or any of those, pro and there's others, there's WorldPay, uh, there's Sage, there's loads of other ones out there, there's um, Two Checkout, there's, there's loads. I only use Stripe and PayPal, it's all I need, it's all I use, and go cardless in the UK. Stripe and PayPal works perfectly. So I have those on there, I have my secure checkout. You don't need SSL for PayPal, but you do for Stripe. You can't use Stripe without SSL. So the first thing, if you're on wherever you're hosting, find out if you've got SSL, find out what it's gonna to cost to get SSL. Remember, third party Let's Encrypt is free. However, some third party, some hosting companies, if they're cheap, they make their money by selling you SSL certificates on top. So you might not be able to use Let's Encrypt on your host, it depends on who you're with. Make sure that's secure, then you can use Stripe. Easy, that's done. The next thing I'd recommend, something else I use, is something called Smart Offers. Now, you don't need to use this, but what that does is when you come to check out, um, if they've got a certain product, or if there's a certain thing that's in um, their back. Sorry guys, you can blame Andrew Gray for that one. Go onto Andrew Gray's profile and say, don't fucking ring Steve while he's in the middle of a Facebook Live. And also, should have put it on Do Not Disturb. Sorry about that, it cut out because Andrew phoned me. And Andrew, if you're watching this, I'll call you back in a minute, mate. Coming back to this though, Smart Offers, what Smart Offers allows you to do is insert an upsell. So if they have a certain product in the basket or if they've purchased something or if they've done something, then one of the things that we can do at this point is add an upsell to this where we can actually say, so you've purchased this, would you like that as well? The way that I do that, and I'll give you an example, is in my book. If people buy a digital copy of my book, and they've only got the digital, then what I say to them is, would you like to add the physical book as well? I'll discount you five pounds, which is the cost of the digital book, and I will send you the paperback. So you'll basically get the digital book for free right now, and I'll send you the paperback. That way, I make an extra five pounds, they get a physical and digital copy. It's a small little upsell, but this is just one of the examples of what I do. We talked about upsells before in the sales funnel, but this is how I do it, and this is where it comes in. And it's conditional, so it's based on certain products. The next thing you need to know, so that's smart offers. You realize now I've got a bigger board, I'm gonna go for longer, right? And the other thing that I use here is thank you page control. So Chris Lima introduced me to this, and I'm really grateful, and I'll post a shopping list, I'll post all the links afterwards. But Chris Lima introduced me to this, it's called, um, we uh, we'll thank you page control, and what that basically means is depending on what product gets purchased, depends on what page we're going to send you to. Because if you purchase one thing, you may have a thank you page for that. Different product may have a different series of things. So you want to make sure that once they've purchased, they're direct redirected to whatever it is that they need in terms of maybe it's course access, maybe it's access to a book, maybe it's a video, you know, maybe it's details to where the event is, whatever it may be. Maybe that is an upsell. Maybe that's where your upsell comes in. Yeah. Maybe you don't want to do it there. Maybe you want to send them to another sales page. I don't recommend it, but you could. So they're the things that you need to consider. There's a load of other things we can go through, but I really feel at the moment, this is what you really need to consider. Nice, clean page. No navigation. No excuse to leave this page. Make sure you have an exit pop-up. So I use what's called Ninja pop-ups. Ninja pop-ups allows me where if they leave this page, then I pop up this, uh, I give them a pop-up. So that's another thing that I use. So pop-up if they're gonna leave the page, upsell if they need it, testimonial summary, let them put all the details in, uh, checkout field editor, payment gateways, redirect to zero for reconsideration, thank you page control. How's that? Is that enough? Have I been through enough with you? Have you got enough information to help you? I'm gonna go through some of these questions with you now. Um, I realise I've been talking for, actually no, that's not bad, right, half an hour. I think I've done well today. Vinny, hello, Robert, hello, Rebecca, hello. 
Andrea, hello, George. Hello, hello, hello. Ben, Elroy, Sarah, I know. wow, loads of you. What about in X team? Uh, whereabouts in X team do you add the pixel? So great question. If you're going to add pixels to a website, I highly recommend you do it through a free program called Google Tag Manager. So go to Google Tag Manager. You can download that and you can get a script like um, there's a bit of code that you need to put on your site. Now the first time you do this, you may need help if you're not confident with this. It goes into the you need to log into your FTP. So you need to go into the actual core files themselves and you need to add the line of code. And there's instructions in Google Tag Manager, it tells you what to do in there, but you need to go and put that. And if you're in X theme, then you need a child theme. Always, 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 codes like this, put them in the child theme. So you have your main theme, we talked about this yesterday, I've talked about it before, have the main theme, have the child theme. Go into the child theme, and if you're in X specifically, then you'll need to go into, which I remember this off the top of my head, uh, you need to go into stacks, you need to find out what stack you're in, you need to go into global settings, views, global settings, then you need to go into um, header, underscore header.php, and that's where you'll put the code. So again, I know that's, if you're not used to that process, it's like, ooh, and every theme's different. So you might need help with that, but that's not a complicated thing, just speak to whoever got the theme from, just ask them. There's probably plugins, I mean, I, don't, I, I really do not recommend a plugin that inserts code into the head because if you get hijacked through that plugin and they can insert whatever script or code they want into the head of your website, you're, gonna, you're just opening yourselves up for trouble. You know, viruses or getting um, you know, hijacked or anything like that. So I would not have a plugin, I would not, that's a level of security I don't feel comfortable giving someone I don't know. So I'd make sure that you personally do it yourself. If you can't do it, then hire someone. Just There's enough groups out there that you can reach out to people, support groups, speak to the theme that you're using or the company you're using. Um, you know, There's normally places you can do that. But I would use Google Tag Manager, and then from within Google Tag Manager, you simply go in, it says add new code, uh, you post the code for whatever you're using in there. So you can do Hotjar, uh, for your tracking, you can do Google Analytics, you can do your Facebook tracking pixel, Instagram pixel, all the other pixels that you need. You can also do any chat widget, anything that you need can all go into there. And then you can choose what pages it gets fired on. It's brilliant, I highly recommend it. Uh, can you change WooCommerce plugin checkout page to Polish language so my clients could understand everything easily? Absolutely, there's a plugin called w, um, WPML. WordPress multi-language. Now it takes some setting up and there's some stuff to go through and I'm not gonna go through that now, but if you look at that, that will guide you in the right direction or just hire a developer who can help you do that. But it can absolutely, look, the only limit you have in terms of what you build is your imagination and your budget. Simple as that. So it can definitely be done. Um, do -do -do. Jack, hello Jack. Uh, Tracy, hello. Mike. Rhett, Dylan, hello, hello, hello. Hey Leah, how you all doing? I wanna sell simple websites on my website. I want to sell simple websites on my website. Okay, there are many restrictions for the single website I want to sell. Where should I add the restrictions, sales page, checkout page, below? Um, I wanna understand that question so I can answer that effectively. You want to sell simple websites on your website. So, why? Why are you selling websites? Is that a core thing that you're focused on? Because if you're asking me questions about websites, then are you really in a position to sell websites? That's, that's the first thing I'm gonna ask you. And it's, it's just a, a question because, what if you have a problem? What if someone buys a website from you and have a problem? See, I've got a real uh, conflict of interest with people who call themselves developers when they're not developers because I think that it causes a lot of um, distortion in the marketplace because people are charging for something. Like, I know people that charge hundreds of pounds to install WordPress. It takes five fucking minutes and can be done with a click of two buttons. Installing a theme and some plugins doesn't cost like 600 pounds, yet I know people that are charging it. So I mean, I'm I'm not I'm going to challenge you on that as to why you're doing it, um, and I, I'd need to understand more about that before I can answer it uh, differently. But uh, can I send the template for WooCommerce, please? Uh, yeah, Robert, absolutely, mate. I'll send you the link. Um, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but I have got a, I've got a whole landing page set up where you can go opt in, get the template. There's a video there that tells you how to set it all up and use it. You can absolutely have it, my friend. It's a gift. It's free. I made it. It's what I use on my site. If you go to onlinemastery.co.uk. Put, put anything in a basket, go to the checkout process. I use all of this. I've tested all of this. I've spent a lot of time researching all of this, speaking to people, understanding. I don't do everything perfectly. Like there's still some things I'm not doing and I get that. But overall, this is like, if you adapt this and use this, you're gonna start capturing more sales. I can promise you that. 
And also, here's another thing. I'm going to add this in and why it's so important. I know a lot of people that are using like Acuity for their scheduling, all right? Or they're using Calendly for their scheduling. And then they're using this for the, uh, they're selling stuff on Amazon and then they're selling stuff through their website and then they're selling stuff through Udemy and they're selling some stuff over here and they've got something they're selling over here and there's something over there and so and they haven't got a clue people don't have a clue where their stuff's going it's like oh yeah well this customer bought over there six months ago but now they're over here and they and oh shit what put it all in one place the actual central hub of my business is WooCommerce everything operates from WooCommerce WooCommerce is my hub. It's a centralized port. Everything comes into WooCommerce. I make sure everything comes in here so that I have one single place of dealing with things. If someone wants to purchase an order, manual order, does it do it through WooCommerce. Someone wants to book an appointment, they book it through WooCommerce. Somebody wants to uh, come on an event, they book it through WooCommerce. Someone wants to buy a product, they book it through WooCommerce. Invoices go out through WooCommerce. This goes out through WooCommerce. Thank you notifications, they go out through WooCommerce. Everything happens through WooCommerce. Now WooCommerce is free, However, for some of the extensions, if you want to take deposits, you have to pay extra for that. If you want to take subscriptions, you have to pay extra for that. Don't get upset if you're having to pay out to get money because you should be supporting the developers that build these platforms. Yes, some of the plugins are expensive, but it's still a lot cheaper than going out and hiring a developer to do it yourself. So make sure if you're going to use WooCommerce, although the plugin itself is free, a lot of these other things I've talked about, the terms and conditions plugin you'd have to pay for, uh, the cookie plugin you can get for free, but it's some that you have to pay for, smart office you have to pay for, thank you page control, ninja page pop-ups, they, they all check out Editor Pro, they're things you have to pay for. But if this is a business, then you should have a budget. And so you need to offset that in your budget. Something to consider. Uh, fab brain fried, thank you. Leah, you're so welcome and sorry, I really wasn't trying to fry your brain here, hon. Uh, this is amazing, Steve Priceless, Sarah, thank you. Mwah. Look, guys, girls, you are more than welcome. If you find this valuable, if you, if you feel like anybody should, um, should see this, please tag them below. But what I would really appreciate, I'm going to ask you a favor now because this would mean a lot to me. If you can just tag, like go onto my wall, just say thanks and tag me in it. Because then I haven't got to sit there and promote myself because you guys can do it for me. If you're finding this truly valuable, then please like tell other people. Because that's one of the reasons that I like to do this, because I give you value, and in return, all I ask, if you can, is just tell people what value you got from this, so that other people can come and find out about it as well. That's, you know, if I can help, the more people I can help, like, I'm not, I'm not selling you anything, I don't want anything for this. I just want you to use it so you can be successful, so you can say, thanks Steve, that helped. Like, that's my payment, it's the, the gratitude that I get for helping people. Uh, QuickBooks got a good invoice system as well, uh, you still find it all your or your luggage at the hotel. Um, you still find it all your luggage at the hotel? You lost me, it's gone over my head, mate. Yep, trying to recall that one, lost me, sorry, mate. Uh, but QuickBooks does, yes, there's uh, Zero. there's FreshBooks, there's QuickBooks. There's definitely some, um, some good invoicing software and plugin software out there you can use. I just personally use Zero. I like it, it works really well. Um, it's what my payroll and everything's done through. Uh, so valuable, thank you. Well then, thank you so much. I have to go. Unfortunately, I have a client call at half past, which I'm running late. So Kelly, I'm going to call you right now. I'm sorry I'm running late. Andrew, I'll call you back afterwards because you interrupted my Facebook Live. But guys, thank you very, very much. I hope this has been useful. Please, again, tag, like, share, anything that you need to do to get this out to the people that need to see it. Have an amazing day, and I will see you tomorrow for another Midday Mastery, 12 o'clock. Don't forget your brew. See you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, and by the way, let me know what you think. How's the new setup? How's it look, sound, feel? Is it good? Should I change it? Feedback below. Take care. Have a good day. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.